professionalinvestor.com's daily brief. The answer to your question is learn the goddamn process, trade your trading plans, don't take too much risk on any one trade, and just let yourself get rich. Hello everyone, welcome back to the rationalinvestor.com's daily brief. Um... Uh, my apologies for starting a little late here today. I was in a crude uh, short and I was humming and hawing about whether to keep the position on while trying to do this uh, public broadcast or uh, whether I should just close it out. And I eventually just said, screw it, close it out. I think it took like 20, 25 ticks or something from the market. So I can't complain, but uh, uh, profitable day. I suppose that's a good thing. But uh, I really like the level, and I was uh, I, my hunch is I'm going to regret uh, having closed out that position. But it's you know if anything, if any of you decide that you want to go down this crazy social media and doing these broadcasts on a daily basis and stuff, um, very very difficult to do these shows with uh, open live positions on. It's uh, it's a little bit stressful. So my apologies for starting a little bit late, but uh, what the hell? Better late than never. Uh, today is Wednesday, Wednesday. Uh, where are we here? We had, oh, I thought we had an absolutely fantastic Panacook uh, report from uh, Seward uh, yesterday. Um, I'm ever so proud of that guy uh, and really the whole TRI team. Um, we're, we're very blessed uh, with the people that we have here at TRI. I hope, I mean, I hope, 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 hope. I can live up uh, to uh, your guys' expectations um, and um, and be the demonstrator of best practices and just try and be a good person for you all in a world where, God, there's just, there are just not that many good people around, eh? Lots of people wearing Gucci sweaters that would love to uh, liberate you from your money um, and uh, and even do it with a smile on their face, which is just evil. Uh, but, uh, anyway, I'll try my best. That's all I can do. And, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, your report here for, uh, Wednesday, uh, 10th of April, marching through the month. Um, interesting, actually, we have, uh, Marat, our level two instructor, uh, coming on the, uh, broadcast on Friday, the after party, always a pleasure listening to Marat, uh, consummate professional. Uh, and I would say a very, very intelligent, well-informed investor, and of course, uh, our level two instructor, um, and also an absolute sweetheart, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life, uh, and strong like bull. <laughs> you don't want to mess with Marat. He's an old cop. <laughs> and actually, it's interesting. We do actually attract a lot of old uh, uh, police officers at TRI. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but anyway, I'll leave that for you to decide. So we have him coming on the call on Friday, the 12th. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because we are in the first two weeks of Q2 2024. And actually, we just did this sector rotation model um, uh, module uh, with our uh, level three class yesterday. And FYI, um, I think we've, we've kind of decided that as a uh, sort of a and an encouragement, if you will, I don't know, sweetener, <laughs> anybody who knows uh, warrants and our talks about options and derivatives um, <clears throat> to get you to complete the education program. I actually personally am back teaching the level three program. And I thought, you know, what that also means is the uh, classes are a good three hours long. <laughs> Poor old level three years, you know, because Brian loves the sound of his own voice. And I could talk about this stuff forever. You know? <laughs> so anyway, Tuesday, yesterday, we had level three class. We did sector rotation. We are in the first two weeks of uh, Q2 2024. And Marat, interestingly enough, uh, I think uh, Chris was saying that his uh, the the name of his uh, of his uh, research, uh, he calls it sectorology or something like that. I think that's what Chris said. I don't know, maybe he can correct me on that. So tune in to Friday's uh, Daily Brief. Uh, you'll not only have Brian's first two weeks uh, summary of uh, sector rotation modeling, 
Uh, but we also get a special treat. We have Murad on the call. So super. Sectorology. All right, there you go. Sectorology. Thank you, Chris. Um, you've got a big dose of Julian tomorrow. So I uh, hope you enjoy uh, the uh, experience with Julian. And today uh, you got a big whack of the beanish. I uh, don't really have any time constraints here, so uh, we'll probably try and aim to have this done by the bottom half of the hour. <clears throat> let's say, uh, you know, about 9, 9.30, let's try and uh, wind up this public broadcast. Um, and uh, then we'll go off and hang out in the after party uh, and, um, and uh, circle around, answer any questions people might have. As you can see from the screen, uh, and actually... Crypto is actually doing a hell of a lot better than it was uh, first thing this morning out of the gate. But you can see a huge, huge movement in the market today. Um, why? Uh, because we had a big, long awaited. Keep in mind, we had like two days there of basically no econs. And I think everything was all sort of all sort of stuffed into the pipeline here for today. Uh, and the much anticipated consumer price index inflation report out of the United States for the month of, uh, I guess, March. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I, I think it's uh, March data. Uh, and FYI, it was ugly. Uh oh, dun dun dun. And you know, the interesting thing about this is that, uh, all of our inflation metrics that we use at TRI, and it's fascinating. Somebody even commented on the video uh, yesterday, why are these videos getting so few views? Because our data, if you had just followed our data and the tools that we teach you on how to analyze the market and how to interpret price action, they basically had you thinking that, hey, there's no chance of a Fed interest rate cut. That's silly talk. Uh, and, you know, the, it's like $100 million, billion dollar uh, institutions, all that. They have the, you know, mass viewers and, uh, and all that and get PhDs and all that and getting all wrapped up in this. Oh, yeah, Fed's got three rate cuts uh, priced into the... And we're sitting here at TRI going, what the hell are these people talking about? None of the economic data justifies this. And none of our tools that we use to analyze the market justify this. Where the fuck are these people coming from? And yet what's fascinating is somebody even commented yesterday. Why are there so few views for these video? It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah you're, you know, you got a good point there. Unfortunately, I don't have a name for you. Mr. Dash, <laughs> when they say over on YouTube, probably being censored. Because I tell you, I mean, what we do at TRI is just, you know, it's next level. It is a professional way. It is the way, right? We teach you the process. Um, and I got to say, you know, uh, hanging out in the day trader room uh, with Ed this morning uh, and Just Ice, Just Ice, you talk way too much. <laughs> our, our, our inside joke um and poor old craig uh craig's such a fucking badass trader but uh he um actually i don't even know the name of his diagnosis it's a nasty diagnosis the poor guy and if anything this is a great thing because the poor guy um uh, you know unfortunately there's you know stupid human bodies i mean you know i my story with my son and liam i i sit i actually like could I can bring myself to tears just thinking about how God fucked my son and how my son has to live this whole goddamn life and basically, a, um, you know, a, a half a body. And how is that utter, how is that at all fair to this beautiful little spirit that has been injected into this world? And I'm directly responsible. I'm at fault for, for torturing my son uh, his soul uh, in this existence, you know. So, unfortunately, a lot of people who, well, this is totally non-market, so I'm not quite sure what we're going. On. Let's get back on topic. Sorry, everybody. 
Okay, uh, so inf uh, inflation data, ugly. <laughs> no reason to think about Fed cutting rates anytime soon. Uh, and you should just go and watch. Mr. Powell, go and wash your mouth out with soap uh, and stand in the corner with the dunce cap on because you're acting like a lawyer and you're trying to lawyer up the market when you're supposed to be acting like a lender of last resort and you're the backstop of the market, and you're not supposed to be going in there and injecting your opinion, because frankly speaking, you Fed officials' opinions are worthless. Anyway, trade your setups. Uh, you ever heard someone talk like that before? So <laughs> the news this morning was pretty ugly. Uh, fascinating at the same time, too, to see that uh, crude inventories are slightly building. But interesting to see that uh, gasoline inventory is not really building very much. And this is really the market we should be watching uh, heading into the uh, summer driving season. Uh, what what are the inventories looking like as we head into that May 2-4 weekend for the unleaded gasoline? Uh, which is still technically over a month away. So I wouldn't like say that's it. Uh, the energy market rally is over. There's no reason to think that there would be any sort of pause right now. Uh, and of course, when we start seeing M's and divergence and trade location, then we can actually start thinking about trade setups. Uh, I will say today that it was a tough day in the market to trade because uh, we had, of course, all this inflation data come out right out of the gate and the market just absolutely puked out on the event. Then things started to firm up a bit. And actually, uh, markets uh, that I'm following really closely, things like NVIDIA, actually started to break down yesterday. Uh, and they're kind of just treading water here right now. So, uh, But the point, I guess, is that we had a you know, broader market, a brick and mortar kind of conversation. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Our sector rotation, which we'll do in detail on Friday. So be sure to uh, tune in. Uh, for that. But it basically says that we're actually in a very, very strong economic uh, situation right now. Uh, and, you know, all of the inflationary data is also pointing that uh, price pressure is still very, very strong. There's no reason to look for a break in the economy just uh, as of yet. Uh, but also too, notice like we had a Fed speaker, like literally 15 minutes right after this huge data dump. Uh, and then we had the Bank of China to, uh, come out with a rate uh, policy announcement. Now, of course, they're doing their press conference, uh, which, frankly speaking, I think is just a waste of time. All you do is just insert whatever Rothschild's uh, latest, uh, uh, you know, WEF, Klaus von Dickhead, um, you know, whatever their policy is. That's that's basically what the Bank of Canada is going to be doing. Uh, but the long and short of it here, what, oh, big hurry up and do nothing out of the Bank of Canada. What a surprise. They'll basically just follow whatever the path the Fed is. And if the Fed sees all this inflationary pressure still in the pipeline, there's no way in hell you're going to be cutting interest rates anytime soon. Um, so there's your data, right? Obviously, the inflation number was, was the big driver. And if we look at the price action, you can see. And the very first thing that I saw when I got up, and I was up at about five o'clock, I saw the print come out, and the US dollar just went absolutely apeshit bullish to the upside. Boom. Actually, what was interesting about this is, of course, you can see, you know, I've been humming and on about some further upside uh, uh, bullish uh, harmonics, although I suppose this you now. Uh, is off the table with these lows being taken out. In fact, actually, we could probably even draw. This is going to be a big one now. So there to there. Uh, and now, and actually, that's probably there to there kind of thinking. Uh, now we can go all the way up to here. Geez, who knows where the hell this is going to take us. And interesting, too, how we came right down into that 2.618 and then just turned on a dime. So uh, with the inflation data that just came out, um, I think the propensity for the U.S. to think about uh, raising interest rates is actually realistic versus uh, actually, you know, thinking about cutting interest rates. Of course, this is going to absolutely kill Mr. Biden. Um, and it'll be interesting to see 
how uh, much political pressure uh, the Fed is under right now to try and not raise interest rates. And the sad part about it is if they, you know, keep having, because, you know, this is core rate data too. So this isn't even like consumer headline. This is core numbers, which means that this actually excludes food and energy. And of course, you've been hearing me barking about uh, uh, energy prices, crude prices, unleaded prices moving up. So, you know, the headline number is going to be even uglier. In fact, I would even say that that's a low ball number. So uh, month over month, I mean, this is annualized. And I actually think that's a low number, too, because if you analyze 4% month over month, that, you know, this means if the annual rate right now is 3.8 and the core rate right now month over month is 4, then that means that the, the front end is actually being jacked up. Uh, so this number is going to have to rise over time. Uh, but that would be like 4%. Wait a minute, we're going the wrong direction. We wanted inflation down at 2%. And now we're moving back up. <laughs> so uh, I, I do think that a lot of this job boning, oh yeah, we're going to be cutting rates three times. So uh, that'll get the stock market all ramping up. Right? Oh, it's a bull, run away bull. Oh, I've got to buy a full bull. Uh, get your Gucci sweaters on and all that crap. Um, you know, put it all together. Uh, it doesn't surprise me to see the U.S. dollar just booming higher. And interestingly enough, if we actually look at this from that longer term bought perspective, uh, this was a buy level here, move stop to scratch, never did come back to that scratch level. Now move stop to trailing level has been hit. And the ABCD target, which has been sort of our ultimate target all along, is way up top here at uh, 106.71 kind of idea. And I don't see any reason why that can't happen. Oh, look at that. There's a hole on the price charts. A gap. How often do gaps get filled in? I think you all can answer that. So fascinating how uh, right up into these ABCD objectives and bought trade uh, profit taking levels. There happens to be a big hole on the charts there. So uh, this, I think, is definitely got to, I mean, obviously that chart's awfully hard to see, but I think that's definitely the theme. And you can see every currency around the world is getting absolutely obliterated versus, uh, versus the greenback and, you know, China da um it'll be interesting even with the announcement that they're not uh, changing rates uh there's the china d's uh, currency is getting whacked here um but put it all together i mean uh, the u.s dollar is reigning supreme here as i had said earlier and interesting to see how uh, crypto is trying desperately to firm up here you know if we talk market structure bear uh you know lower highs and lower lows defines a bear probably you know, uh, we can really see this in things like the total. Yesterday's was uh, yesterday's price action was a nasty failure because uh, this I I like to call this a tweezers where you have these two candles and a little bit of a tail up top and a little bit excuse me a little bit of a wick up top a little bit of a tail down below. But in essence, this is a trading range. You could call this railroad tracks. If we lose the low of the fail uh, bar, that actually is a sell signal unto itself. Uh, and then, you know, if we look at the old Bitcoin and, you know, this has been our sort of talk all along here was that we we're kind of thinking, at least I was, I don't know whether anybody in the public uh, shared my view, uh, but uh, sort of a repeat of 2015, 16 cycle. And I even said in the video yesterday, I wouldn't be surprised if we just go sideways and we just park ourselves uh, in this range and in interesting reload zones. I think we're just simply paying reload zone ping pong here. I was wondering whether they could push this up and actually run all these stops. But as soon as they ran all these stops up here, the buying just literally stopped. There just wasn't any more buying interest whatsoever. So they ran those stops up top there, ding, 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 ding. Inside, actually, no, that's a fractal top. There's your inside bar sell signal right there. And we've just been melting down since there. There just is no buying interest here at all. And, you know, this is a trader's life. It kind of sucks. Uh, did have a nice uh, short working off of this double top. So, uh, you know, we took profits on the initial dump. 
uh, then move stop to scratch uh, on uh, on the remaining position. They stopped us out at scratch, didn't take a loss, so that's good. Uh, they, uh, you know, run all of these weak hands, all of these stop loss orders, run them out. And now they're probably just going to resume the down. And, you know, if we look at volume impetus, I think I even said yesterday, one of the things that was bothersome on this rally was you see uh, this volume bar here when they ran all these stops was lower than this bar here. If well, this is a bull, then each new uh, sort of inertial push should see higher green volume, more interest, more buyers. So the fact that we had less buyers come in on this bar here was a bit of a warning. And now you can see the bears are coming alive. A uh, big uh, red selling bar here, sort of broke all this uh, lows here. Then a bigger selling bar here, and then a bigger selling bar here on that actual uh, rate announcement news. Um, very, very difficult to be bullish here in the face of this. Having said that, I do think that we are still in a trading range. I don't see any like higher time frame breakdown. That's when we start looking at these weekly charts. If we actually change this weekly chart to like a line chart, you see that actually we don't have any bearish structure yet. Um, I still think that what we're going to do here is we're just going to go sideways through this happening event window and then sadly and if that's if and it would make sense because this is a huge fundamental event there's no reason to look for the market to break ahead of this event the the, the saying goes by the rumor now what's the news no thank you uh pearl <laughs> you're you're a little bit behind us here pearl <laughs> that was about 10 15 minutes ago but what's the news? The news is the happening. So it's by the rumor. And then when we're on the other side of the happening, then you get your sell the news. There's no reason for this market to break ahead of that event. So what this kind of tells me, and that's what this image is, is, you know, you can see 2015, they topped the market about a month or so ahead of the event, then just parked it in a range and really, even after the event, people are going to be like, okay, having events happen, you know, there's probably, you know, I think that Da Vinci guy is like planning having event parties and expecting the market to go to new highs. And I think, yeah, all right. So we should wind this up. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, so what I think happens here is we just go sideways. Most of the public is going to be like, okay, you know, we had our having event parties, all right, all that's over. Now you look around the house and it's totally trashed. And you look in the kitchen, and there's a sink full of dirty dishes and the garbage cans are overflowing. And it's like, oh, okay, now we got to deal with the hangover. And I, I the, my expectation is, is that there probably will be some selling pressure after the happening event. So if anything, enjoy the market. Uh, you know, we've got what... Uh, I got my little countdown clock on here. We have a nine more days after today. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if we just sort of bang around in this range um, through that event. Uh, I've also said too, that really our job is not really to predict up or down, is to trade setups. And it was interesting how we talked recently about how this SHIB had actually fired an inside bar and meh, you know, but momentum's trying to turn here. I, I'm not really overly enthusiastic about this, but, you know, setups are setups are setups. So if this thing does want to resolve bullishly, I don't see any reason why it can't. Um, what I would say, though, is, you know, looking at our total, uh, we've done some technical damage now against all of these highs. And if we drill down to like a lower time frame chart, uh, what we're really going to need to see here is uh, some half decent structure come in. So you can see, uh, you know, we've done some damage. We're making lower highs and lower lows. If anything, we want this to settle down, saucer out and start, you know, putting in a big fat W. Uh, until that happens, I don't think there's a huge hurry here. Um, and I would strongly suggest that you know, the, the, the market is moving violently here, folks. Um, 
dangerous time of year. Of course, this is uh, we're fast approaching the sell in May and walk away. So here we are in the middle of April. Is this really the best time for you to go and bet the farm uh, on uh, on Gucci sweater futures? <laughs> I don't think so. I think uh, my general message to all of you right now is cool your jets. Uh, if you can come in and nibble away, nanny nibbles, of course, you never really take too much risk on a trade uh, um, on ideas. Great. Uh, but I don't think that this is the time to go in. Uh, and if you don't know how to work stops and manage risk and get out of positions, if they're, if the market's proved you wrong, then I don't think you really need to participate in this kind of market. I think it's got trap written all over it. So be careful here, folks. Okay. I think we'll leave the free broadcast at that. I was four minutes over. Not terrible. Um, nice to see that the market is trying to firm up here after the absolute face plant right out of the gate. I'm not in any hurry whatsoever. Uh, as I had said earlier, I actually did have a really nice, uh, I tell you, I'm having a lot of fun trading this ICT guy setup, and I was short, uh, crude there off of, uh, off of a uh, good old mountain man level. Uh, actually be interesting to see what happened here. Um, so this is, um, you know, this is a high, uh, let's see if I can just give you a quick image here. So this is what I was doing here today. So I sold that. I bought that back in here. Actually, no, that's a different trade. Uh, but I was short off of this mountain man level. I do like this as a, uh, as a shorting level and you can see, uh, the market is trying to top out here. Uh, and I wouldn't even be surprised. The actual oil inventory report today was actually extremely bearish. So I'm actually uh, even scratching my head a little bit why the crude oil market is even positive right now. Uh, other than that, you know, I think um, uh, let's head on over and have fun in the after party and we'll just interact with the, uh, the community, answer some questions and um, yeah, see if I can give you some extra value on the day. Have yourselves a great day, PMA for the win. All the best, hugs and kisses. You always have prices. Bye for now.